tricks. We've been diving deep into the amazing features of Leonardo AI, but there's one crucial element that can truly transform your creations, the power of a good prompt. Think of a prompt as your detailed instruction manual for Leonardo. The more specific and well-structured your prompt is, the closer you'll get to achieving your visual masterpiece. Getting started with prompting. The prompt input field is at the top of the screen. Here, you type precisely what you want to see generated. You can type in just the elements you want to see, or you can type in full sentences, as the system can understand both well. The key, though, is clarity. The more Leonardo understands your input, the higher adherence, detail, and quality you'll generally get. Let me break down a simple but effective prompt structure that will unlock incredible results for you. Here are the five key elements that make up a strong prompt. 1. Style. First things first, define the artistic style you're aiming for. Do you want a classic oil painting, a whimsical cartoon, or something more abstract? 2. Medium. Next, specify the medium you envision. Is it a digital illustration, a photorealistic image, or a detailed sketch? 3. Subject. Now, tell Leonardo AI what the central focus of your image should be. Be as specific as possible. 4. Composition. Want your image to tell a story. Here's where you describe the arrangement of elements. Is your subject centered, off-center, in action, or posed in a specific way. Five, color and lighting. Finally, set the mood. Describe the color palette and lighting conditions you have in mind. Let's put this all together. Here's an example of a well-structured prompt. Realistic oil painting of a black cat in a lying pose, slightly off-center, focusing on facial expressions, with natural muted colors and soft ambient lighting. By giving Leonardo AI clear instructions, we've dramatically increased the chances of getting an image that matches our vision perfectly. How do I create better prompts? One important note to always remember is that typically words at the start of the prompt are weighted more heavily than those at the end. Let's look at some examples. Say we want to generate a knight on a horse galloping across a stormy beach but we also want the thunderstorm to play a prominent role and dominate above the knight himself. Any of the following three would be acceptable, but the first would be potentially most effective, as the storm prompt features first. A stormy night sky with lashing rain backdrops a knight frantically riding a horse down a dark beach. A knight at night frantically rides a horse down a dark beach with a stormy sky and lashing rain backdrop. Stormy backdrop with rain, night riding horse, dark beach, nighttime. When comparing the three images, it's clear that the first is focusing on the storm itself as a priority with bolts of lightning and a longer angle that positions the night as smaller compared to the vista around them. In the second image, the night takes front and center, with detail being focused there and the storm itself not as chaotic, but rather more alluded to in color and tone. The third image has managed to become somewhat more static and painting-like with its slight lack of clarity, focusing on both elements while giving slightly more weight to the backdrop. Whilst certainly not bad, it does lack the dynamic force of either the horse's movement or the chaotic storm from the other images. This is why knowing what you want to create beforehand can allow you to better create your prompts and, by extension, make what you create closer to your ideas. A good idea with prompting is to start small. The longer sentences get, the less likely it is the model will accurately understand. So I advise you to start with a short sentence or a handful of words and build outwards. How do I get more detail? Simply put, you will get more detail out the more you put in. For example, you could use the prompt, man sitting on a chair playing violin and you would get a pretty wide selection of choices due to the freedom the model has been given. Something like this could be expected. But then, if more description is given to create specifics, the model has more to work with, such as old man sitting on a chair playing violin by mountains, which will create this far more specific and prompt adherent image. Negative prompts. 
This nifty little feature is a great first defense against details that are unwanted, such as nudity, extra limbs, or digits. All you need to do is add in what you don't want to see, and the model is far less likely to include them in the image. I'm still getting elements I don't want. If you find you can't stop unwanted aspects from being produced, even with a negative prompt, it's advisable to change models, aspect ratio, or, with alchemy, the style, to see if that improves things. If not, Canvas is a fantastic tool to manually remove unwanted aspects, for which I have an in-depth tutorial coming up soon. Can I create style through reference to popular concepts? You can indeed create a style by referencing popular works or individuals, such as in the style of Van Gogh or in the style of Starry Night painting. This can also be movies, games, and even studios. For example, here is a Studio Ghibli-style image of a hot air balloon race, which clearly emulates the style of the famous animation movie studio. On this aspect, like much with image generation, experimentation is key. More tips and tricks. Utilize modifiers. Consider what form or medium you want the artwork to take. Do you envision a photo, digital painting, 3D render, or a tilt shift effect? Incorporate these modifiers into your prompt to guide the AI's creative process. For example, you can specify a photo of a cat sitting on a bench in a park, or a tilt shift photograph of a cat sitting on a bench. Consider the order of elements, especially when using Prompt Magic V2. If you're using Prompt Magic V2, it can be helpful to start your prompt with the most crucial aspect. For instance, if you want a tilt shift effect, begin your prompt with tilt shift photo of a cat sitting on a bench in a park. This ensures that the AI model understands and prioritizes the key element from the start. Add more reasonable descriptions. While it's important to be creative and imaginative, it's also crucial to provide realistic and achievable instructions. Avoid prompting something overly complex or unrealistic, as it may result in less visually pleasing or coherent outputs. Try to maintain a balance between creativity and feasibility. Use commas to separate concepts in longer prompts. As your prompt becomes more detailed and elaborate, it's helpful to use commas to separate different concepts or elements. For instance, instead of writing a line art drawing of a beautiful cat sitting on a red bench, try adding in commas. This formatting makes it easier for the AI to understand the distinct components of the prompt. Explore magical words. Research and discover specific words or phrases that can have a transformative effect on the generated art. One famous example is art station. Including such magical words in your prompt can yield unique and unexpected results. Experiment with different terms and see how they influence the artistic output. Mastering complex syntax and weights. All right, everyone, we've covered a lot of ground on crafting powerful prompts in Leonardo AI, but there's one more advanced technique that can really improve your creations. Leonardo AI's advanced prompt engine allows for nuance control over the image generation process using brackets. Focus in, because we're about to unlock some secret sauce. To have finer controls with your prompt, you can access and implement syntax and weights using brackets. Here's a detailed explanation of the two main types of brackets, round brackets and square brackets. Round brackets are used to increase the AI's focus on specific elements in your prompt. Imagine them like a spotlight shining brighter on certain keywords. Here's how it works. Let's say we want a picture with a strong emphasis on the color red. By adding single round brackets to our prompt, we're boosting the AI's focus on that element by 10%. This subtle increase can make a big difference. Want to push it even further? Add another set of round brackets, like this. This further intensifies the focus on red by another 10%, bringing it to a total of 120%. Need maximum red? No problem! Triple round brackets escalate the focus on red to 130%. Now, let's talk about square brackets. Square brackets have the opposite effect. They tell the AI to de-emphasize specific elements in your prompt. Think of them like dimming the spotlight on certain keywords. Just like round brackets, square brackets adjust the focus by 10% for each set. For example, if we want to minimize the presence of motion blur, we can use motion blur 0.9. This dials back the focus on motion blur by 10%. 
But what if you want to make a specific element almost non-existent? Use Motion Blur 0.2 to significantly reduce the focus on Motion Blur by 80%. This will likely result in an image with very little to no motion blur. Remember, these are just some basic examples. With practice, you can use complex syntax and weights to achieve incredible levels of detail and control in your Leonardo AI creations. And that's a wrap on complex syntax and weights in Leonardo AI. By using round and square brackets strategically, you can unlock a whole new level of control and detail in your AI creations. Feeling inspired? Stay tuned for the next video in this series, where we'll dive deep into the powerful Canvas editor within Leonardo AI. In the meantime, if you want to become a true AI master, don't forget to check out my comprehensive AI Tools Masterclass playlist. There's a treasure trove of knowledge waiting to unlock your full potential as an AI creator. Let me know in the comments below what kind of AI art you're excited to create next. And please, hit that like button and subscribe for more in-depth AI tutorials just like this one.